Hi, welcome to The Gamesplainer. I'm Jeff The Gamesplainer, and today I'm gamesplaining Lorenzo Il Magnifico. So, Lorenzo Il Magnifico lasts for six rounds total. The game is measured, or each round is measured, by the cards that go into these towers. So, there are four cards out to start with. There are another four level one cards, and then we go to level two. And there's eight in each of those, and then we go to level three, and there's eight in each of those. So, two sets of rounds within each level. At the end of each level, you need to have managed to get up to here, here, or here on the religion track. If you haven't got up to it, or if you decide you don't wish to use where you've got up to, you will have to put one of your markers onto whichever of these pertains to the level of the game. So level one, level two, level three. They are negatives, so you don't necessarily want them, but sometimes it's worth taking so you can push further forward and you get points for doing this track as well. So how does the game work? If every player has four of these markers, so one refers to the black die, a white one refers to the white die, an orange one refers to the orange die, and this one which is a zero. These dice will be rolled at the beginning of the round and their numbers stay for that whole round. So at the moment, black is worth six. What that means is any of these spots have a die number below them. So this has number five, three, one, this one, and number seven. But how do you get seven? I hear you asking. So if I particularly wanted this card, what I would do is probably spend the black one to get up there, that's six, I need a seven, I spend one of these guys as my extra point. Once that's there, I take this card and put that down there. Now, notice there is a cost in the top corner and then this is the benefit along the bottom. And that would go there, then it's the other person's turn. On a future turn, I am not able to put into the same tower another green guy. You can only have a maximum of one guy in each tower. However, this guy, which is neutral, could go here. Now, because he's going for a number one, he would need to spend a guy to make his zero into a one to be able to gain this card. Once again, it would cost him the two money to get that card. Anything in this space with the little lightning bolt arrow next to it is a one-off thing. So that one is referring to this line, one, two, three, four. And then there's an ongoing Thing. So this one actually has an ongoing negative thing. It means he can't use the top two levels of any tower at all in the game. But he's managed to push up to a four on the track. The other thing to bear in mind is if you wish to place a family member into a tower that already has a family member, and it doesn't matter if it's your family member or another player's family member, that will actually cost you another three coins to the bank in order for you to actually be able to use that. So if this player wishes to take either of these two cards, he's going to have to spend three money. For him to go there, he would have had to spend three money because there's already a guy in that tower, even though it is his own. So each of the four different towers puts the cards onto your board in a slightly different spot. If, for example, this card were taken, it's a green one, green ones get put down the bottom. Notice that you need to be at a certain level along here before you're able to put it into this space. So you need to be up to a level three before he's able to get the third card from that tower. Up to here for the fourth one, fifth one, and sixth one. That's the military track. He will gain points, or whoever's furthest up the military track will gain points at the end of the game, whoever second fills up will also gain points, but not as many. If he were to take from the yellow track, so he might just put that in there, the yellow cards go just here. There's no limit on how many you can have or where you have to be with the other things. Remember, he has to pay the cost, so it's two money and two stone. He would get six points for that. Points are tracked around the outside of the board. Two may just pretend he had two money, so it's two money and two stone are being spent, he got the six points. Now, whenever he actually does this action with a six, 
he would gain one point for every purple card. Purple cards are here, and let's just pretend that he was able to get that. It cost him three stone to be able to get that one. Once again, let's pretend there was three stone there. That would gain him two points on the military track. So that's this one here. It would gain him one of these. These are listed here, the little scrolls, and you have a choice of what you wish to take when you do that. So it could be purple guys, it could be a stone and a wood, it could be two money, it could be two more points on that military track, or it could be one more point on the religion track. And anywhere you see this arrow is talking about the end of the game, so at the end of the game he would gain another three points for having that card. But whenever he actions this row, and I'll talk about actioning this row in a moment, he would, assuming he's actioned with a six or more on his dice, he would get one point for each purple card that he has. So the meanings of all these cards is relatively straightforward. The cost is in the top left corner. The one-off ability or action or thing that happens is with the little lightning bolt arrow symbol. And then what happens with the card is in that lower part of the card. Now moving down the board, there are other actions available. Here, you're changing your order. So the order of the game is tracked with that. So blue is going first, green is going second at the moment. If blue were to go there, notice you need a score of one or more, so she used the white die for a two, so that's fine. He would get one of these plus a coin, and that makes him the first player next time. So if that's what the state of the game looks like, when he did that, on the next turn round when we put new cards out, the order of this would be swapped. If you're playing a four player game, uh, anyone who's here, just put them in order so you know who is going in what order next turn. Down here, you'll notice there are spots covered. They're covered up because this is a two-player game. If you were playing a three-player game, those two spots would be uncovered. So what this does is if you use a guy here, so he's used a zero, he needs a one, which would cost him one more money. What he now does is actions this row, or if it was coming from the green player, it would be this row, but he's only actioning it with a one, which would get him one military point and two money. If he actioned that with a six, so he used the black, that would then get him one military and two money, then one point for each purple card that he has. This one, if this is already been used, because you can only put one person on each of the small ones, you can have any number of people on the big ones, but you can only have one of your people on the big ones. And bear in mind that if blue is here, blue cannot go there. That allows him to do exactly the same thing, but with a minus three on his die. So using the black die there, he's actually only actioning a three, which means this card wouldn't action, but the side stuff would. The same rules apply to the bit below, which is talking about the green area. You'll gain one wood, one stone, one person. And then if you've actioned it with a four or more, you would gain two more stone for that particular one. Or he would need to a three showing on that. So that wouldn't actually gain him any extra stuff except for the stuff on the side. This gains him five money, assuming there's at least a one on that. That gets him five more of these guys. And in the four player game, going here would gain you two money and three points on this track. And he gains two of these that are not the same. So you can't get two of the church points on the same one. You can get one church point and two purple guys. In essence, that is the rules of the game. When we get to the end of the second round, this would be scored. So blue being only on one point in the church track is not up to three, which is where he really needs to be for the end of the first round. So he would need to put a token there, which now means every time he takes guys in, he takes one less than the action is saying. So if he were to, for example, do this action, he would only get four guys in rather than five. If he were to do this action, he would get one guy in rather than two. Green now has the choice. He can take the five points and not put a marker on here, so he would gain all the guys that he needs whenever he takes guys or he could choose to put a marker on there to keep moving forward on that track. 
If he decides not to put the marker, he would take that back to zero and get the five points. Then we take out all these cards, put out new ones, roll these dice again, and keep going. So each player has four turns. I believe that is it for the rules. As more and more cards get put down onto your board, you'll notice that you need to do other things. Bear in mind you can only have a maximum of six of each card type. Uh, even the blue and purple ones, your maximum of six, even if you're able to take more than one in a particular go, you can only have six of them. At the end of the game, blue cards are getting points according to the bottom of the board. So if you have six blue cards, you gain 21 points for it. If you only have two blue cards, you'll get three points. Purple, any of the end game points that are on there. Green will get points with, depending on how far down that track you've managed to get with green cards and yellow have taken the points when you put them down. There are also some points for whoever's furthest up this military track and whoever's second furthest up that military track and obviously any points you've had from the religion track on the way through. Noticing that there is negative points on that third age religion if you haven't managed to get past the five. So here for the first one, there for the second one, there for the third one. And I believe that is everything. So, please go ahead and watch my games play to get a feel for how the game actually plays. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you would like to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games that I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.